Hey guys, we are back for a fast thought today and we have a really cool one. So um, you, you've kind of not heard it, but we had some weird intersections that uh, got us in, in touch with Megan Nichols, who, who's the CEO at the Mississauga Food Bank. So uh, this is my home turf. Um, you know, like a lot of my secret Santa gifts go to the Mississauga Food Bank because um, that's what I asked for. And I get her marketing email. So I was like, I know who I need to reach out to. So um, Peter Boyd, you heard on a fast thought and he um, out in the Okanagan Valley is looking for people to make sure that they're giving and they're contributing. And so we reached out to Megan and her team and I was kind of blown away by what's happening just in my hometown. I don't think it's still like, I think about the numbers and it kind of makes me, um, I don't know what it makes me. It makes me really sad and it makes me want to be able to do more. So we thought, um, we'd love to have Megan on and, and just have her tell us about what's going on in her world. Yeah, for sure. So thanks, Phil. Thanks, Kenny. Thanks for having mm -hmm. me. It's always fun to connect on LinkedIn. So I'm glad to talk a little bit yeah. about what we do. So Food Banks Mississauga is the largest social service organization in Mississauga that is tackling food insecurity and hunger. And we lead a network of over 60 agency partners, including neighborhood food banks, pantries, snack and meal programs, shelters, youth programs, seniors drop-ins, anywhere where people in poverty can get food in Mississauga. And through this network, last year we provided food for just over 6 million meals, and we're on track this year to provide food for about 8 million meals. And so that's just for the city of Mississauga. And the scary point that we've reached is now 5% of the entire city of Mississauga is using the services of the food bank. And so as the cost of living has risen so dramatically, my understanding is that food is 20 to 25% more expensive than this time last year. Mm -hmm. The cost of housing is astronomical in the GTA as well as across the country. People just can no longer afford to make ends meet even people who were living maybe above the poverty line, but were kind of borrowing from one pocket to another and kind of mm -hmm. hustling to make it work can no longer, the math just doesn't math anymore. And folks incomes are just too low to be able to afford the food they need. And so that's where food banks Mississauga and our network steps in, in the same way that food banks do in every community across Canada. Yeah, it's craziness. I, I, um, your team was sharing some numbers, you know, the, 5% is a big number, but I, I was blown away, right? Because I think the the number pre-pandemic was something like 19,000. Was it yeah. families or people? And then yeah. that number's ballooned, right? Like Yeah, so before the pandemic, we were serving about 19,000 individuals a year. Uh -huh. Some people come every month. Some people might only need us three times in the year, like between contracts or something like that. But that's 19,000 individuals. And now it's over 35,000 individuals. Um, and so we've had to increase our services by 82% since before the pandemic. Mm -hmm. um, and so many people using the food bank are using it for the first time. People who've never needed it before have found themselves in a position where they're having to make tough decisions. Do I pay my rent or do I buy food? Do I pay my electricity or do I buy food? Do I buy my kids winter coats or do I buy food? And unfortunately, they're choosing not to buy the food and then need to rely on us at the food bank because those other things are just as important. And you're talking, so and demographics, you're talking all ages. Yeah. One person homes, yeah. Couple so, I mean, homes, like what we're talking about everybody. I, I, I guess, people, yeah, because to dispel that one a little, right? Because I think yeah. everyone gets the, you know, the like, perception you have is you know, that person that everybody pictures, yeah. right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Which is not so, fair because it's not true. Twenty-five percent of our clients are folks with disabilities, so they're receiving funds from our provincial disability support program, where the um, it's about a thousand dollars a month below the poverty line what they receive. So our government mandates that they live a thousand dollars a month below the poverty line, and so we're filling the gap for those people. Another 25% of people would be on in Ontario, what we call Ontario Works, the welfare program um, for people who are out of work, looking for work in that in between. And the maximum an individual can get on welfare, are you ready? $733 a month, the max. You can't even find a room for $733 a month, let alone live on that. Yeah. And then the other half of our clients would be a combination of probably newcomers and working folks. 
So a lot of people, I mean, uh, Pearson International Airport's located right here in Mississauga. Yeah. Um, and many people arrive from other countries and they're finding that the amount of money that they were told they needed to save to live in Canada, not enough. And then folks who are working multiple jobs, this is usually the case, minimum wage is far below a living wage for what it would take to actually be able to afford life here in the city. And so, um, you know, families with kids, we're seeing an increase in the number of children who need help again. Um, seniors, that's one that just kills me. Seniors, you know, who are finding themselves the money they would put aside all these years and their pensions and not these enough. kind of things, not enough. And now they're relying on us for things like incontinence products and depends and people are living in such a bad way that they have to rely on a charity for their urinary incontinence something's gone totally wrong in our society something's gone wrong yeah, that one hurts it's, it's it hurts. been a scary time and i think you know uh, someone in the it was a newspaper article yesterday said food bankers must feel like you're screaming into the wind and that is exactly what it feels like I feel like we've been ringing the bell, we've been raising the alarm, whatever phrase of those you say. And we're saying food banks in our 40 years of existence in Canada have never had such a drastic increase in use. Two million people a month across our country go to a food bank now. Two One million. in two million every month. One in seven Canadians is saying that they're struggling with food insecurity. One in five are saying they're going to need to rely on a charity to meet their basic needs. And yet the response from governments is either nothing or so limited as to not truly make an impact in this cost of living crisis. And food banks are overwhelmed, they're exhausted, and they're not sure how long we can keep just expanding and expanding mm -hmm. and expanding and expanding to meet this demand. Well, the point would be, obviously, is that we shouldn't be trying to expand the food banks obviously right i mean it's supposed to be quite literally last resort and it should be just exactly. a stop point, right it's not it's not meant for emergencies to be, right it's not meant to be part of the social fabric it's not meant to be part of of, of a social assistance of government to me that, that that's nonsensical i don't understand how we get to and, that point this really should be truly a stopgap and primarily yeah. especially in ontario Food banks are not funded by the government. We are not a government agency. Work. So how do you get funded? So am I in the BC, yeah. are we the same? It's the public. We rely on generosity of the public to fund us. So if- There's nobody else that backs you guys. Like there's no agencies so us, within the government. Here in Mississauga, um, the region of Peel has supported food banks. They have done an, a mm. special I increase in funding recently. So I want to give credit where credit's due. I'll recall but on, it, a, yeah. on an ongoing basis, there's a maximum of $100,000 a year available for us from the region of Peel, and it cost me $8 million a year to run the food bank. And so uh, there have been some governments across Canada who've wow. invested in food security, but for the most part, we are 100% charitably funded. And so when the economy is not in a great place and people are feeling nervous about giving charitably, and then the only way for people to eat is through charitable generosity, it's oh, a really scary place to be. That's a problem, yeah. yeah. Okay, so scary, sad. Yeah. Um, yeah. What? I mean, okay, so so listeners, like this is the This Commerce Life audience. Yeah. You guys are all CPG folks. You work in the industry. You know packages. You know food. You're in food. Like, what do you what do you need from our audience? Like, what what like guys? You know, we got to help out here, right? Well, what works, maybe what doesn't? Because I mean, I think sure. like we look at it. Like, we, we built in retail for a trillion years, right? So I know a lot of times, um, and it's not it's not because it's a dumping ground, but a lot of times, um, short dated or uh, mm -hmm. best befores are you know part it's bullshit i mean the number that doesn't fall apart three minutes after it hits best before but you know what we always say here we always say it's best before not you'll die after thank you okay i know that's, <laughs> well, yeah, you have to say that <laughs> it drives me mental because we waste so much food for a yeah. bullshit number on a package that truly has got nothing to do with anything for the most part some things emphatically yes please don't of course don't go past date for the most and that's part where it's dry goods truly, dry goods. 
And those products have expiration dates, which is different from a best yeah. before date. And most so food all does not have an people, expiration. You know? <laughs> You're right. And most food, for example, since we're all very clear out in the world here, most food does not have an expiration date. Most has best before. So I guess from a perspective of the CPG people or the retail people, yeah. not that it's a dumping ground and not that that's the point of it, but if stuff is getting close to short date or best before or just creep past it, it's not... I don't know how you know you don't want to word well, it so like it sounds like but, we're just but Kenny. So hang on a second. So Megan, maybe just tell the audience, right? Because I think I think our guys will start to get that, but I think mm -hmm. it's better for you just to tell our Thank audience you. what you need, and then we'll sure. guys, and how's it work? You'll figure it out, I'm sure, right? Mm -hmm. So yeah. Even, so here's so, could be people in the house too. It could be stuff in the house. Like if I've got a box of crackers that's three days before, he's got more before. pasta than most of the nation. So I'm sure Kenny could just like. Okay, okay, that's one of the commodities that, that doesn't run past best before. That yeah, so them. the way we do it here in Mississauga, so about 20% of our food is purchased. So we do use some of our financial resources to purchase items that we just can't get donated. And then about 20% of our food comes from the public through food drives. People going to the store, buying stuff, bringing it into a bin at their church or their work or their mosque or whatever. And then okay. we pick those up and bring them in. Right. The other 60% in the middle we find somewhere along the supply chain from farmer to grocery store. And so we are, we have a team of folks like fundraisers who are food raisers, who they're talking to farmers, they're talking to distribution centers, wholesalers and saying, sometimes it's a combo. We're gonna buy these two skids of tuna. Could you also throw in some stuff for free? But more often it's exactly what you said, stuff close to code, mislabeled, mispackaged, promotions ended. Um, or seconds. We also, we do about half of our food is fresh and frozen. And so we deal with a lot of carrots with two legs and tiny potatoes and yams that are too big and all that kind of stuff. Mm. Because that's all perfectly good food. Once you peel a carrot, it doesn't matter that it had two legs. It's still it doesn't matter about anything. No, ugly and food so, counts. <laughs> yes, yes. And so um, what what folks can do in the retail space is work with their local food bank. So uh, Loblaws and Walmart have national programs with Food Banks Canada where local food banks are assigned to a store and all the food that those retailers can put aside for us, like freeze meat and put aside things before their date, food banks can come around and pick it up. That's it's awesome. just, there is a logistical, there's a logistical challenge sometimes in terms of our capacity. So when retailers can help us out by bringing it to us, amazing. But we want to partner with you instead of that stuff going in the dumpster. If it's yeah. still good for human consumption, if you would take it home and feed your family retailers with it, we want to use it to feed another family. If you can't sell it, we will give it out. Right. And so, you know, there's been a lot of movement to kind of reduce waste in the grocery sector over the last few years, which is amazing because we need to also save our planet. Um, and some of that waste used to go to the food banks. Right. So how do right. we work together? Like we want you right. to tighten your belt on waste, but not so far that there's not excess food anymore. But I think this leads us back to the thing uh, that you said earlier is that food banks are having to expand now and it's kind of feeling like oh there's no more like spare food to be donated because there's two million people a month going to the food banks now so we have to uh, tackle this on both sides so how can we you know work with retailers and work with you know upstream there take that surplus good food that they have and also collectively how can we activate the grocery sector to say they don't want to have to keep giving food to the food banks they also want people paid fairly they also want people to have secure jobs, to know that EI will support them when they need it, that if they had a disability, they'd be supported because the, all those things contribute to a healthy and happy community. I think that's sort of the point though, right? Is that really and truly, we shouldn't be talking about having people to dig into their pockets nor businesses to try to figure out how to manage this. This is a social issue. This is, this is why we have government. Otherwise we would just yeah. run We'd be the wild, wild west, and we'd just have to be on our own little yeah. spaces with shotguns mm -hmm. at the door and protecting ourselves. I mean, that's the whole point of society. And yeah, just, you know, yeah. The number perspective, because sometimes I think when the numbers don't make sense, we're talking Calgary and Edmonton. Everybody in Calgary and Edmonton is going to the food bank mm -hmm. every day in Canada. Mm -hmm. Like, put the number in perspective sometimes, people. is Two million is a big number, but it doesn't mean anything. All of Calgary, all of Edmonton, every day. Every month. Yeah, every month every that month. number of people are visiting I mean, the food seriously. bank. Seriously. Yep. 
That's that's insanity in, in, in one of the richest countries in the world. Well, and the thing is, though, is that we often talk about the richest countries in the world, and I, I'm going to get let my political views show a little bit. But where that riches lives is not in the people who need the food bank. The problem is where that's concentrated. Right. And so we try to endorse concepts yeah. like living wage, right? So for instance, yeah. we're a living wage organization. The living wage for Toronto is now set at $25.05 an hour. And so if there are employers paying people less than $25 and five cents an hour in the GTA, the those people food. can't afford to live. You're making them food insecure. Right. And they're probably going to have to use a food bank. So I think we as uh, um, business leaders need to consider, I recognize businesses have a responsibility to their shareholders. They also have a responsibility to their community. And if right. decisions they're making are sending their employees to use the food bank. Yeah, yeah. I think back to your concentration, though, too, Megan, yeah. if you look at it, if 80 percent of the businesses in this country are small businesses, it's those people are doing what they can for the most part mm -hmm. just to, sort of, to get through the day because small business is not easy. I mean, I mean, everybody mm -hmm. thinks everybody in business is loaded and they're not. Most of those people may be participating in these programs because it's not easy. We need Absolutely. the upper echelons who are making the billions to maybe funnel just you know a few pennies downhill, right? Through taxes, not through charity, well, because it's, it's hard it's, to rely it's, on. Back to it, it's that. It's, it's, a, it's, it's a government issue again. You know, you can't expect mm -hmm. people to take out of their pocket all the time. It should be, mm -hmm. you know, we make money and you put it into the, the kitty and the kitty gets mm -hmm. dispersed. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So and I mean, impacts of poverty are are deep. You know, like in Ontario, we know poverty, which is what causes food bank use. It costs the province $33 billion a year in health care costs, in justice costs, in lost revenue, because people who don't have good food to eat, their health is crappy. Their right. mental health is crappy. Their ability to parent well is crappy. Because right. when you're so stressed that you can't pay your bills, or you're wondering where your food's going to come from, how else can you succeed in other areas of your life? You don't. And kids so we're, don't eat. Kids can't learn. Exactly. Kids can't learn. What do you? So if you can't learn, what do you do? I mean, if, if you look at our country, like we're all talking on the news, the shoplifting issue. Shop, you know, there are opportunists. For, forget that group. There's a lot mm -hmm. of people that are just trying to get through. But I, you no know, there's no condoning of anything. But it's reality, right? One mm -hmm. of the things that came up when we talked to Peter is he said that he had a, a group of kids that they didn't even look forward to the holidays. And so when he dug into it, he said, you know, like what's the, and they said, you know, because we don't eat, right? Cause we're not at school. So we don't get food. And like, all of this makes me just, you know, cause I, I, I just don't, we should, we don't have a country where that should be happening ever. And we don't, we don't even have no. a national school food program that was promised yeah. several elections ago and still hasn't come mm -hmm. into place. So those kids saying they're missing out on the food they get at school, it's probably a charitable program run by 100%. parents and teachers, making yeah. sure they have it. And then you're yeah. right on the holidays, there's a number of great organizations that have popped up that provide like backpacks, or kind of like weekend packs for kids yeah. to take home to have food for yeah. the weekend. But like, when you were growing up in Canada, I don't think oh. we pictured, let's give yeah. kids bags of food to take home on the weekend because their family's too poor to feed them on school breaks. Well, that's what Peter, yeah, Peter they don't want to take a break because they, not because they don't want the break because they, they won't get fat. Like that's not, that's insane. not the country that we grew up in. I don't think, right. It's not the country mm -hmm. that we should be. That's not the country we want to be part of. No, so it's no, not. No, no. We, we got to fix it. Right. So yeah. And um, so, I mean, this this holiday season for po people who are listening is a very yes. important time of year for us in the same way as so much hangs in the balance for retailers in the last 60 days of the year. So much hangs in the balance for food banks and other charities in the last 60 days yeah. of the year. More than half our revenue comes in at this end time of the year. And so we are out in the community now engaging with corporations and community groups and everybody from all sectors to you know for us we need to raise two million dollars this holiday season to be able to continue offering the service we offer and so food banks in the community value partnerships with their local businesses and we value opportunities even to just get this awareness out because now you both and all the folks listening have a chance to understand that this is a significant issue in our community 
I need everyone to talk about it with one other person. If they feel passionately enough about it, call their elected representatives. But the only thing standing between neighbors having food this holiday and not having food is the generosity of people's donations. That's it. And so people are able, if companies are able to get in touch with their local food bank and say, how can we support you this holiday season? Um, food banks need it more than ever. Yeah. Hey guys, you heard it. You uh, heard Megan, it. thank you for coming on. We really appreciate this. You're very welcome. Um, thank you for having me. Whatever you have an update or if you want to, um, you're in the middle of your drive, right? Or you just started the drive. So um, if in the middle, you know, you want to come back and tell us what's happening, yeah, just um, shoot us okay. a note. We'll, we'll have you right back on. Um, this will air, like we're recording it Thursday. This will air tomorrow morning. Okay. Um, so so we'll we'll do that quick so we can get things out. And and, um, and then I think, you know, Megan spoke, has spoken for a lot of food banks as well. If you're another food bank out there and you want to come back on, um, and lend to this this message. Jump on here as well. We'll we'll definitely have you guys on. Um, anything yeah. we can do to help kind of move things along, we'll do. Sounds so. good. Thank you so yeah. much. I appreciate it. No, Thanks, Megan. Thank you. Okay. No worries. Have a good okay. one. Okay. Thanks, you too. Bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.